Good day again, ladies and gentlemen, and we are back again together. And I'm sure you, that you've been enjoying uh, this, well, somewhat of a revision session as you prepare towards your final exams. Uh, please, please, please don't break the momentum. I know that some of you are probably done writing prelims or some of you are still finishing them off. Please don't uh, don't lose that momentum, OK, uh, because, you know, um, you know, John Maxwell says, actually, uh, that momentum is your friend when you have it. But yay, it's your worst enemy when you lose it. So just make sure that you keep that momentum going. Uh, because I know you are looking for great results for that final exam, right? So, um, by the way, for those of you who need assistance with mathematics or with physics, okay, please just don't forget to just uh, send me an email. That's info at mlungisingosi.co.za. Okay, let's get into it. Okay, so um, I'm taking this from Gauteng question 4. Uh, that's 2021. Uh, that's the recent prelim that uh, some have written, okay, just uh, uh, as a quick diagnosis. And by the way, uh, if you've got questions uh, that you'd like for me to treat, just uh, put a suggestion, you know, in the comments, and I'll see whether the question is really, really worth uh, for us to look at, and, you know, we'll, we'll tackle it together. Okay, let's get into it. They say we've got a calf mass 900 kilograms which is moving east and collides with a freestanding barrier that is a mass of 3,200 kilograms. Ooh, oh my goodness, uh, poor barrier. <laughs> they say study the following momentum time graph, okay, uh, and the barrier uh, of the car, rather, and the barrier below, and answer the questions that follow. Now, obviously, the car was in motion, the barrier was stationary, that's before collision, but after collision, so this is where the collision basically takes place, right? So this tells you this was the momentum of the car. The momentum of the barrier was zero, right? But immediately afterwards, the momentum of the barrier just shoots up and it becomes that value over there. And the momentum of the car is now, it actually now becomes negative. So it tells you that it was going the opposite direction. Right, now please I want you to also note, in a way they've kind of given us a positive direction here because they've told us that the car was initially moving east, right? So, uh, and you can see momentum of the car before collision is positive. So it means that we must have taken east as positive. So if you think about uh, us, uh, there's our car there. Of course, you can see this is the, uh, you know, Range Rover Evoque or whatever. <laughs> okay. And there's that barrier over there. Okay. And that's before collision. Okay. So we know that was the car moving towards it. But then what happens after collision? You can see the momentum of the car. Of course, you hit a barrier like that. Uh, what it did is that it caused the car to somewhat move backwards. That's why the momentum of the car afterwards is negative. So it means the car was actually pushed uh, backwards whilst the barrier was moved in that direction, in the positive direction, okay? Right, now, uh, they said study, or, or rather state, the law of conservation of linear momentum. Of course, we know in an isolated system, the total linear momentum is conserved, right? Or you can say in an isolated system, uh, to, uh, momentum before collision is equal to momentum after a collision, right? All right, so they say uh, use the information in the graph to calculate. Okay, we want the final speed and direction of the car, okay? So uh, we've got the momentum of the car after collision, right? That's what they mean by final speed, okay? So all I'm simply going to do is that for 4.2.1, okay, remember that momentum is the product of mass and velocity, right? So I've got the momentum of the car after collision 
it's minus 1. Uh, 144 rather okay the mass of the car remember was given to us as 900 okay and we want the speed of it so we're just simply going to say uh, divide both sides by 900 okay so we get a value of uh, 144 divided by 900 and we get uh, 0 0.16 so we get v is minus 0 0.16 meters per second but remember uh, the fact that it's negative, what, what is that telling us? It's telling us it was 0 0.16 meters per second, right? Remember, original direction was to the east positive, so this must be to the west, okay? Right, and then they say calculate the impulse of the car. Of course, we know that impulse, okay, so for this 4.2.2, we know impulse it's the product of a force right and the period over which that force acts on the body right so in this case uh, we know that uh, f delta t however this is equal to also the change in momentum this is the impulse momentum uh, relationship right so we don't have anything about force and time However, we do have momentum. So we can actually say that impulse will be, right, change in momentum. So that's momentum final minus momentum initial, right? Uh, we're looking at the car. So what is my momentum final? Okay, my momentum final is minus 144. Um, uh, subtract. What is my momentum initial for the car? remember so there it is there it's 18,000 right so in this case minus a positive 18,000 uh, these things are quite important ladies and gents because remember at the end of the day you you need to know that uh, you've actually done the right thing right so that's minus 18 144 okay and that will be measured in kilograms meters per second and of course uh, uh, once again it means that our impulse or our change in momentum in this case will be uh, again to the west okay so you get 18144 kilograms meters per second this is to the west okay right and um, the uh, the last portion of it they want to know is this collision elastic or inelastic and we need to verify our answer okay with a calculation right so i'm just going to move this over to the other side okay right um remember how do we prove elasticity okay we whether a collision is elastic or inelastic right we need to find out what is the value of the kinetic energy right so we say kinetic energy before and kinetic energy afterwards so let me take the sum of their kinetic energy before collision and the sum of their kinetic energies after collision right uh, so what i'm going to do is in fact before i do that uh, let's find out what the velocity or the speed of the car uh, is you remember we found the speed of the car after collision okay uh, it was 0 0.16 meters per second but what was the speed of the car before uh, um, uh, yeah before collision so remember once again this is going to be p is equals to mv so this is for the car okay um, so the momentum is three uh, sorry 18 okay this is for the car i need to be careful so this is 18000 which is equal to 900 v okay divide that by 900 on both sides okay uh, i know that will cancel that so that's uh, 180 divide by 9 
um, which will be V uh, is 20 meters per second. Now remember, this, this was in the positive direction, right? But also remember that we, we, we uh, the barrier was stationary before collision. Um, so uh, what was that 18144 there? Okay, right. So the barrier was therefore moved afterwards, right? So I'm going to find the speed of the barrier. Uh, so that's 18144 uh, after collision. Okay, the mass of the barrier, however, is 3,200. And I want to find out what the velocity final of the barrier is. Right, so that's um, 18144. Okay. Uh, 144 divided by 3,200. And I think you'll get a speed of 5.67 meters per second. Okay, now, remember we are still trying to prove elasticity, right? Whether it's elastic or inelastic. So we say, well, let's take the sum of their kinetic energy before collision. Okay, and I'm going to say, well, this is going to be EK for the car plus EK for the barrier, right? So uh, this is going to be a half MV squared. Okay, so this is for the car plus half MV squared. Remember, this is for the barrier. Okay, so that's going to be 1 over 2. Mass of the car is 900. Velocity of the car is um, uh, before collision. Remember uh, that 18,000, remember we said it was 20, right? So that's 20 squared. Plus, uh, remember that the barrier before collision, okay, uh, it was zero there, okay? All right, um, so what do we get? Okay, we get an answer of 180,000, okay? Uh, remember, this is energy that's in joules. So you can say 180 kilojoules, okay? And then uh, let's find out what the sum of the kinetic energy is after collision, okay? Um, so we're going to say EK for the car, plus for the barrier again, okay? Right, so I'm just going to substitute. This is going to be half. This is 900. Remember, after collision, all right? This is when the car was moving at that minus 0 0.16, right? So that's 0 0.16 squared. And the barrier... Okay, was now moving at, so this is 3,200, okay? I uh, hate having to squeeze everything in there, okay? And then what was the speed of the car, I mean of the barrier after? It was 5.67, okay? But remember that was squared as well, right? Okay, uh, again, sorry about that, okay? So that was 5.67 squared. Of course, I'm, I'm sure you can get this, right? So um, what do we get for, for our final uh, uh, kinetic energy? Okay, I get an answer of uh, 51. Yeah, you can just simply round that off to 450, right? Uh, joules. Okay, you can round it off to about 51 kilojoules, right? And then uh, what do we note about uh, the two kinetic energies, right? You'll note there, uh, this simply says to us that the kinetic energy before, okay, remember this was 5.67 squared, right? Okay, so this says to us the kinetic energy before is not equal to the kinetic energy afterwards, right? So what do we know about this uh, collision? It's an inelastic collision. Okay. And why is that? 
because ek initial is not equal to ek final so it means some of that energy was converted um, into other forms of energy as we as the collision took place okay right of course you know you can imagine when they collide with each other some of that sound energy uh, you know uh, some will be will cause the deformation of the car and so on so in this case um, uh, the collision is inelastic okay uh, just one thing to remind you ladies and gents you know most of you when you substitute especially when you've got a negative velocity you've got a tendency of substituting say zero a half of 900 let's say and then you say uh, minus 0 0.16 squared please when you make this uh, minus 0 0.16 squared uh, what's happening is that you're not uh, multiplying or you're not squaring that sign as well please get into the habit of putting that in brackets okay uh, it always helps uh, so that you can actually get to the right answer all right uh, i think i am done with this question all right and um, i hope you enjoyed it and you got the uh, gist of it of what's happening here all right, and I'll see you guys again next time. Please don't forget to subscribe and please tell others about it. Okay, we are learning great things here. All right, so I'll see you guys next time. Shop, shop.